Samantha from Juicy Mo Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a really cute little ring dish with white polymer clay and these cute uh, little sea turtles on a silk screen. Now I'll provide a link to where I got this in the description below the video so be sure to check that out if you want to get them. But for now we're going to just start with our tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grow a piece of plain printing paper just regular printing paper and another piece and then you're going to burnish your uh, pearl white polymer clay. Now I'm using Prima and it is two millimeters thick which is the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And I'm just burnishing this just to make sure that we don't have any fingerprints or marks or anything slightly like that. Okay. And I'll just keep that on the piece of printing paper. Now, only do this if you're going to be working with it immediately. If you're going to be going off for an hour and not working with it at any point in time, take it off the printing paper uh, because it will leach the clay. Now we're going to be working with a variety of different mica powders. Uh, any colours that you like will work, but these are the colours that I have. And they're some of the mica powders that I supply on my Etsy shop. And I'll again provide a link to those. So now I have the cutter that I want to use, and now I'm not going to press down, I'm just going to put roughly where I want it. And I just want to trim away some of this excess clay. Because I don't want to uh, use too much mica powder if I don't have to, and I also don't want to uh, di make too much clay dirty. More clay than I need anyway. Because any clay that I trim off here can be popped back with my pearl white and used at a later date with a different project. Okay. Here we go. So now I am going to, before I use the mica powders, I'm going to actually take a roller. And now any roller or uh, texture that has kind of a swirly pattern will work. And now we're not trying to get a nice even print. Uh, you just want to take it firmly and just begin rolling like so and now we're not worrying about getting an even print because essentially all we want to do is we just want to create swirls with our mic about later on so you can see here I'm going back over it again So it's not supposed to form a pattern of anything. So just do that. Okay. And I'm going to grab my mica powder and I'm going to start with my darkest one. And again, just before I just, just want to make sure that I haven't got any clay that I could just trim off. Okay. Take a nice big brush. Dip it in there. And brush over the surface. And I do believe that this mica powder is called Kingfisher Blue. Uh, but again, any mica powder that you like will work for this project. I'm just going with kind of an ocean theme. Okay, then I will continue with this kind of turquoise green. I do believe it's called Peacock Green. Uh, then I will continue with this uh, Stormy Blue. And then finally... Uh, I can't actually remember what this one was called. I do know that it's number 34 though. Okay, so I'll just continue on. Okay, here we go. Now I just want to go over a second time and just kind of blend these colours together. So take some of that uh, dark blue and just brush that a little bit over the peacock. Take the peacock and brush that a little bit over the silver and so on. And this will just blend the colours and kind of give it more of a smooth uh, graduation. Okay. And 
then you can even take some of this darker colour and add it into sections just to give slightly different tones just because I feel like this part over here is a little bit light you can add that in, you can even add in some of this green so just have fun, don't make it all just one colour play around and have some fun with it okay. and then when you're done, make sure to go and close your mica powders because you don't want to accidentally jog those and then below so you get rid of the excess mica powder and then take your brush and just brush over the surface like so and this will just burnish our mica powder in so that there's no excess and you can blow while doing this okay. then bring over a roller and I'm just going to flatten this and yes I'm flattening out that texture but again it's going to create very slight swirls and will add a slight effect to it you do not have to do it if you do not want to uh, but I think it looks nice when I do that And once I'm done with the roller, you can grab a piece of printing paper and just finish it off because the roller's not going to be able to get everything. And just press nice and hard and burnish. And this will also burnish the uh, mica powder into your clay so that it is nice and firmly stuck there. Okay, there we go. You can see that we did get some off, but that's fine. it should be just about completely flat so I'll just check one more time with my roller just to make sure that that's nice and flat and then one more time with my paper so I want it perfectly flat Now our next step is going to be to bring over our stencil, oh, excuse me, our silk screen. And this is a little different from the ones that I've used before. It's got a sticky back here. And so you want to keep it on this um, backing to keep that sticky. And the sticky side goes face down onto your clay. Gently burnish that on, don't burnish too hard because you don't want it to um, get burnished into the clay. You just want to burnish that on so that it's stuck down pretty well. Now before I put the paint on, uh, this stencil, excuse me, sorry I keep calling it stencil, silk screen comes with instructions so if you do happen to use it, follow those instructions because it is different from um, the regular stencils that you get, silk screens that you get, I do apologise. Now I'm going to be using some white uh, paint. And I personally like to tap it on. And the reason for this is it can actually leave a texture behind. You can use, uh, you can squeeze some on and then use a credit card to um, push it through the screen. But I like to tap it on. And then it leaves this interesting texture behind. Again, completely up to you. Okay, and now we do need to work fast because we don't want this paint drying. And as soon as I'm done, just quickly smooth it on, make sure that I've got it through the screen everywhere. Then tap with my finger to create that texture. And then you lift it straight up and put it into a tub of water that you should already have uh, prepared. And I'm going to go put that in a tub. Okay, so my salt screen is drying. And so this is what it should look like. And hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of a texture to that. See if 
I can catch the light just right there. Hopefully you can see there that there is a texture. Okay, and now you want to leave this to dry um, before you cut it out. But basically, uh, this is what it's going to look like. And we're also going to um, cover the back in mica powder afterwards as well. Okay, and there we go. So now you want to position your cutter and just make sure that it is in the middle. So I need to have my head here to see that. Okay, then press down. Just make sure to press that really nice and well. Lift that up. Get rid of that excess clay. Okay. And we should be able to get this off. If it doesn't peel up, then we can just use our blade to nick it up. Just bring that over. Okay, I'm just slowly spinning so that I can pick that up. Don't want to go too quickly because you can very easily uh, nick it. There we go. Then I'm not sure if you can see there, but the paint actually has crackled a little bit on top of that uh, mica pad, which is very nice and interesting. And here is the back. Let's get rid of that paper because it's got mica pad on it. Put this face down, like so, and we're just going to tend to the back of our piece now. So just take another piece of plain printer paper and very gently smooth it over because you don't want to be doing that too hard uh, because otherwise you'll distort the shape. Okay, and you can see it's going to slide around, which is fine. And then run your hand along the edge because that's going to have a little bit of a crackly edge because of the cutter. So by just running it along, you should smooth it. Okay. And then I'm busy debating on whether I want to put mica powders on the back. Because it can be a little risky because you can end with it end up with it on the front. So this time I think I want to be a little bit more careful and I'm actually going to use my finger to burnish it in. So I'll just use my brush to place it. Okay. And then use your finger to burnish that onto the clay. And we're not going to be trying to go for an interesting texture or anything because this is the back of our bowl. And I just want to be very careful. And then I can run along the sides as well. Okay. And just brush on as much mica powder as you want. Okay. Pick that up. Move that out of the way because I've got mica powder on it now. And just gently brush around those sides. If you want, you can even run your brush along it very carefully. get some mica powder on the edges so that it doesn't look like you've got pearl white there. And my brush just has a little bit of mica powder on it left over. It doesn't have to be perfectly covered, it just needs to look uh, similar to the rest of the piece. And then just smooth it over with your fingers when you're done. Like so. And there we go. All done. Easy. Okay, so I'll pop that down. And I want to texture the back. So I'm going to be using uh, a texture sponge. This one. Like so. And I don't want a really, really thick texture. I just want it to have this interesting sandpapery kind of organic texture. You can use sandpaper, I'm using an aquarium sponge. Okay, and just make sure to cover all the areas. And then again, run around the edges with your finger to 
get rid of any distortion. And there we go, that should work. Alright, so that's basically it for the bowl. So now we are going to choose our form, or you should have already chosen it already, actually. And just before we do that, I just want to get that into the right shape. So I'm just going around these edges and just gently pressing back into a round shape. Okay. And you can generally see from the front where it's not round. And I know that'll take you a long time to do this, but this is where you need to spend the most time because um, once it's baked, you can't fix it. Okay, so grab this. And this is my little bowl. Just going to try and place that in nice and evenly. Just gently push that in. I don't want to push it down the entire way. I don't want it to be as uh, deep as this dish. And you can generally move it around quite a bit because of the amount of mica powder that is on there. So just get it into the middle. Get it into a place where you're happy. Okay, and then you're going to bake that for a full hour at pre most recommended temperature. And then when this is done, uh, I will take it out and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. So you should be able to slide it up out of the disc, out of the uh, bowl like that. You can see the back has a very light texture, but not too much. The sides are nicely smoothed and coloured, and the inside we have this beautiful little turtle. And you can see that the um, paint kind of has that interesting crackled, distressed look. So now we need to seal it, so that is quite important. So what I will do is I will be using uh, some UV resin. And you could use Varathane as well if you wanted. Uh, Renaissance Wax would also work okay. But I really like the resin because it just looks best in my opinion. Okay, so I'll put on a bit. And I'm just going to hold that and I'm going to just use a brush to brush that resin over. And that will just bring out the colours and the shine and it will just make it look really pretty. Just continue doing that. And now I might have a little bit too much resin in here. That's easy to get rid of, so don't worry about it. All I want to do is I just want to make sure that I've got a nice even coat, so I'll twist it around to make sure that i got everywhere. That's quite important. And I don't think I have too much resin in here. Just brush up the sides one last time to make sure that I got all of them. And then you're going to put that into UV light for probably around 15 minutes uh, to get it to set. Okay, and I'll show you how to quickly clean that brush. Put that to the side away from your UV light. You don't want uh, it to be anywhere near because otherwise this resin will set on it. And um, actually we don't need a resin mat. And then it will go into the UV light. Okay, and here it is. So you can see how beautiful and shiny that is now. So I don't really want to put resin on the back. You can put resin on the back if you want, uh, but it will tend to stick to things. And also, I would like a contrast between the uh, front, which will be this side, and the back. So the back I'm actually going to be using Renaissance Wax to seal. It will just give it a light sheen and it will seal in uh, that mica powder. Which already has been uh, pretty well burnished onto the surface so it's not like it's um, easy to get off anyway. So I'm just going to brush on that wax over all the sides. And I'm going to grab a buffing oil, and this should remove any excess buff, um, 
mac powder too. see that a little bit came off uh, but not much so all you would do now is you can um, trim off those little sticky bits or you can uh, leave them they don't tend to get onto anything uh, but there we go that's um, all buffed and that will seal in once it has uh, dried you need to let that dry for probably at least half an hour before using it or anything like that so I'm just gonna pop that to the side and I almost forgot, but I am supposed to be showing you how to clean off your brush. So you can need some wet, a wet wipe and some isopropyl alcohol. And I just spray that. Sorry, my. There we go. Heavily spray it. And then clean. And you might need to do this a few times to get rid of all of that uh, resin. So I'm just spraying it again. Generally two to three times uh, we'll get rid of it. But that is how I clean my uh, brushes. So there you can see. Back to usual. So anyway, that's how I clean my brushes. I almost forgot to show you that. I apologize. But yeah, that is basically it for this tutorial. Very simple, a great gift. Um, you can use any silk screen you want, but I really did want to use this little turtle one. Um, and I might be using it in some future projects because it really is quite cute looking. And you can see if I twist this around that you can see those swirls in the background. It does add a little bit of extra dimension. Um, yeah, that's basically it for today's tutorial. So if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like more tutorials like this one, please do consider subscribing uh, so that you can get a notification when I release videos, as I do every single week. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron, uh, as that also helps me produce more videos every single week. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.